Today is a day of great rejoicing for London and indeed for every other town, village and hamlet in the country for it is June the 8th, 1946, a day in history set aside for jubilant rejoicing, a day of victory rejoicing, victory over the Nazi tyranny and for six long years that battle was fought at home, abroad, on the land, on the sea and in the air. Whilst now, to mark the end of those days, comes the Great Victory Parade, a parade not easily to be forgotten. Great crowds throng the approaches to Buckingham Palace, where their majesties, the King and Queen, enter their open coach, which, with an escort of household cavalry, will take them to the specially erected saluting base in the Mall. From that stand, they will accept the dipping of the colours and the presenting of arms in salutary well-being. To join in that homage and respect come nations from all parts of the world, allies in that great struggle. A mechanised parade with all the paraphernalia and might of modern war will follow the chiefs of staff and the supreme allied commanders. What a day it must be for them, something at least they will not easily forget. It is their reward for those untiring efforts, resource and energy. Massed bands of the Scottish and Irish regiments combine to head the pageant, and what more magnificent display could the eye perceive? At the head of the gigantic column of marching feet comes the United States of America. The soldier, the sailor, the airman and the waves, followed by a contingent from China of whose battles perhaps we heard too little.
the great mechanized procession leads the way and to the music of armor, heavy armor, allied commanders headed by a police motorcycle patrol acknowledge the profound greetings of the crowds awaiting them. Dispatch riders of the Royal Navy precede their commanders whose deeds of valor, enterprise and unflinching courage have thrilled the world and will continue to do so. Many are the stories that remain as yet untold. Amphibious jeeps, ducks, weasels and numerous other vehicles, all of which played their part in the many spheres of operations and notably on the beaches and inroads of Normandy make a noteworthy display. A great array of vehicles form the Royal Air Force section of the parade. Small armoured cars carry the commanders of this huge force while radar vehicles are particularly prominent and intermingle with ambulances, signal vans, fire tenders and even a dental car. Floodlights, beacons, snow plows and power plants, all mobile, each with their special purpose, complete the array. But the prize goes to this 25,000 pounder. It certainly looks a beauty and for making a beautiful mess there's little to beat it. Utilities and other civilian services, each having played its part in the great struggle, illustrate their activities in the mechanized field. Postal services, transport, mobile canteen, buses and food supplies. Food supplies in both their transportation and their rearing. A heavy task and a task well done. With the Royal Armoured Corps leading the way for the Army Group, which is the biggest section of this mammoth display, there rolls along on its caterpillar tracks the well-known Comet Command Tank promptly followed up by the great wartime premier's namesake, the Churchill. Monster Shermans rattle and clatter with Cromwell's flowers and bridge lane tanks. No, there's nothing missing from this gigantic display of victorious might where every conceivable implement of war is shown in its stark reality. To conclude this great day of victory rejoicing,
floodlighting and fireworks abound, and to the delight of millions, effigies of the vanquished leaders burn up in profusion. This restoration of some of the peaceful uses of gunpowder, magnesium, and many other items is heartening indeed, for tonight, peace reigns supreme. Peace, and let us hope goodwill, with goodwill of you and I and of all those other people just like you and I.